So my paper, uh, my paper is actually totally different <laughs> than the previous ones because uh, it's about the interventions in interbank markets in emerging countries. And actually I wanted to stop already working on emerging countries, but I think that now the sample is quite good for, uh, for investigating my research question. Uh, what has motivated me to look at this um, to look at this research question? Well, when you look at the interbank markets, what happened during the global crisis? This was that uh, in 2008, after the collapse of Lehman Brothers, the interbank markets in uh, Western countries, in advanced countries, actually stopped to function efficiently. And there are some studies which try to explain why was it happened. Okay, so uh, some studies say well, there was a liquidity risk, so we were afraid of uh, that uh, the banks um, uh, would lose the liquidity, therefore we, the, the banks which had access uh, in liquidity they didn't want to lend the money. Uh, other studies say well, the credit risk was mostly more important than the liquidity risk, which means we were afraid of that some banks collapse uh, and the state does not uh, help these banks and this was the reason why also some banks stopped to lending money to this uh, to this weaker banks so actually uh, for the um, especially after the collapse of Lehman Brothers the liquidity hypothesis dominated then some new papers came uh, came up and they claim that the counterparty credit risk was more important. But recently also, so there's uh, some other papers which claim actually there was no liquidity and uh, uh, the fault risk of the banking institutions which played the role why the spreads increased and the banks did not want to lend to, uh, to weaker banks. It was because the banks became extremely risk averse and they started to accumulate liquidity. So which uh, Aharia said, uh, uh, I refer to the uh, uh, to the precautionary motive, actually. Okay, so there, there are some explanations why the interbank market stop uh, functioning efficiently in these countries, and this have incentivized banks, especially central banks, to to intervene on um, on the interbank uh, on the interbank market. In emerging countries, the issue was totally different. So actually, the, there was not the case that the interbank market stopped functioning. So actually, they uh, functioned quite smoothly. Okay, there was no credit risk, there was no liquidity risk actually in these markets. However, we observe a spread increase. Okay, uh, inter, um, on the interbank market, and most of the studies claim that the spread increase was rather due to the global uncertainty, the risk which was in a global in the western advanced countries then because of the credit or um, credit or liquidity risk which uh, existed uh, in uh, these countries but nevertheless what we have noticed in emerging countries is that most of the central banks decided to intervene so there was no liquidity risk there was no credit risk but nevertheless the uh, the central banks decided to intervene and most of them announced that they wanted to protect the market against potential consequences coming from the global crisis. This is what they stated, which actually we say that this was rather, this, that this intervention had rather a precautionary motive. So, uh, uh, in my paper, what I wanted to see is how effective were this intervention. So actually, uh, there is a huge literature coming from the advanced countries which assess how effective were interventions of the Fed, how, inf uh, how effective were all kind of the support programs, TARP and so on in the US, in Europe, the help of the European Central Bank. But as I stated, this help was needed and mo mostly studies say that actually it was quite successful. However, there are no studies which look at the effectiveness of the interventions of central banks in emerging countries. And these types of interventions had a totally different nature because it was rather a stated precautionary motive, precautionary nature of the interventions. So this is the first actually contribution to the existing literature. There are no studies which look at the, uh, the emerging countries, at the intervention of central banks in emerging countries as well as international interventions, because we had some international interventions. IMF gave the credit line to, uh, to the emerging countries. Uh, the second uh, contribution to the existing literature is um, the fact of the precautionary intervention. So actually, we know that uh, 
recently has some papers appeared which say that uh, we notice on the interbank, especially in the interbank market, some kind of the precautionary motives for um, uh, for liquidity uh, um, keeping and so on. So, what kind? How effective are these precautionary motives? And secondly, also when we look at the existing studies coming from the uh, from the advanced countries. The literature is also mixed. So some countries say, some studies say, well, the TARP was successful, and others say it was not successful, exactly the same with ECB um, programs and so on. So actually, the, the also the literature on uh, on advanced countries is very mixed in terms of the effectiveness of of uh, central bank uh, interventions or uh, institution uh, authorities interventions on uh, interbank markets. So uh, my hypothesis, uh, what I want, my research question, what I wanted to look at, how effective were this intervention on the emerging markets and what was the role of international interventions. Okay, so my sample, I have taken six Central and Eastern European countries, these are uh, Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia. I used the announcement made by the central banks uh, coming from March 15, 2007 and December uh, 21st, 2011. So I have collected manually all types of intervention, uh, all types of announcement uh, which came up from uh, the central banks. Uh, of these countries, as well as from international authorities, especially from IMF, as well as from the international, from the uh, from the uh, foreign central banks, in terms of the swap. Okay, because there were a lot of agreements based on swap uh, on swaps. Um, what kind of intervention do I consider? Actually, I consider uh, the interest rate decisions. So, all kind of decision on. Um, lowering the interest rate, quantitative and credit easing, liquidity support. In a second I will explain because there was some uh, liquidity support in this country, so I'll show you in a, uh, in a second in a uh, descriptive statistics. In domestic and foreign currency, as well as announcement on financial sector policy, but surprisingly, uh, this announcement on financial sector policy were, were not quite wide. So actually most of the announcement which happened or interventions which happened on the interbank market in these countries, this was central bank intervention as kind of the liquidity support. Okay? We use event study methodology okay, with a three and five day window and we look how spreads on interbank market reacted to this type of the announcements. Okay, so uh, let me first show the uh, uh, more specifically the intervention which we take into the consideration. Well, uh, the domestic interventions and uh, international announcement. So uh, domestic intervention we take especially the interest rate cuts. You can see also in which countries you have this time because not in all countries happen this, the same type of the interventions. Uh, in, uh, in the liquidity support, we have um, uh, the most common the uh, rep operations, uh, change in reserve requirements, extension of collateral frameworks. Um, then uh, financial sector policy, there were action, uh, actually uh, just the institutional reform uh, in Poland it has been created, so-called financial, sec financial sector stability board. So. Uh, kind of the institutional uh, institution which uh, was responsible for uh, creation actually the, the report on the stability of, uh, of the financial market in Poland. Uh, we had also some liquidity guarantees okay, in Poland, especially in Poland, and we had some international announcements and as I said they can be divided into the liquidity support and this were the swaps in foreign, uh, in foreign currency as well as some financial sector policy uh, policy instrument and this were especially IMF credit lines which were granted to Poland, to Latvia and to Hungary. Important is that oh, each type of the announcement has been included separately, right? So if for example IMF had said that we're going to give the credit line to Poland in 2009, they, they had extended the value of the credit line in 2010 and they announced it so it has been treated as a separate announcement, okay? All right, let's look at the uh, descriptive, how, um, uh, how was it? So actually we found that there were uh, 76 decisions on the interest rate cuts. 
okay, uh, in all of these countries, then uh, the most common uh, liquidity support, this were the reserve requirements, so actually this was the decrease in the reserve requirements. Um, uh, we had also a collateral extension, so the central banks we can uh, uh, we can the requirements on uh, on taking the collateral then there were the repo operations uh, with the central bank and uh, we had uh, in international policy instruments the most common those were the credits uh, granted to, by imf to uh, to these countries but we also had some swap agreements especially from the bank of sweden and uh, from the ecb okay uh, and this were four decisions on um on this type of uh, interventions. So uh, what kind of uh, measures do we take to assess the effect of these interventions uh, on the interbank market in these countries? Where well, we take three measures, which are very common in the existing literature. We take the spread between three month interbank offer trade, uh, offer trade uh, particular for each country, right? So for, for Poland it's wider, so also interbank rate for Czech, uh, we take Czech and so on. Swap spread defines the spread paid by the fixed rate pay of an interest rate swap over the rate of the run treasure with the same maturity and we take five year IRS pay on domestic currency and treasury yields with the same maturity and we take the credit default swap but here we have to be very careful because actually in, the, uh, in all the central uh, eastern countries uh, they have been traded since October uh, 9, 2008 and they are only based on, um, on uh, US dollar which has an uh, important uh, uh, which is important to notice that of course the, the, the currency risk is included in this as well okay so show the evolution of the spread in all these uh, countries so actually what we see of course the highest increase in spread was uh, after the collapse of Lehman Brothers and this was uh, actually a rise for central banks to intervene nevertheless what I stated the markets were liquid this was quite interesting that the markets were liquid and no liquidity and default risk was uh, uh, existent in all these countries but nevertheless, the spread increased significantly. And we also see that, for example, in Poland, it stayed for a very long time quite high. So you see here we have 2010. So actually, though central bank in Poland has intervened many times, nevertheless, the spread uh, stayed quite high for a very long time, for almost two years, right? And uh, in 2014, so even in 2014, we did not notice that it came back to its previous uh, to its previous uh, uh, volume. So actually, uh, this is the first picture which shows us a kind of, or, uh, that might be that these interventions were not very effective, that the spread stayed so for a long time, so at so high level. Uh, the same when we look at the evaluation of the spra uh, swap spread, but we have to be very careful with that because the swap spread is defined as a fixed uh, interest rate paid by the fixed rate pay minus the yield on the treasury uh, yield uh, with the same maturity and if there was an increase in country risk then it means that the yields on the treasury increase as well so which means that the spread became negative and this is exactly what was happening uh, and some studies even show that there was an increase in yields on the treasury uh, uh, securities and this uh, actually led to the fact that the spreads went down so became negative because of the increase of the country risk right? and, and what we see here is exactly uh, an opposite trend which um, as compared to the to the previous slide that this spread uh, increased but in a negative in a negative way and the same as in the previous uh, slide, they stayed for a very long time, so negative for a very long time. So it is very interesting actually what, what was happening in these in this countries during that time, Dif totally different than um, what was happening in the advanced countries. So, uh, so what we did, so we used the event study and we actually pulled okay, uh, the same types of the announcements across countries and uh, for uh, three and five day window you, you you see here the result for five day window but they are exactly the same for three day window uh, and we also uh, present uh, in a paper very detailed uh, results when we 
pull uh, the announcements within the uh, specific within the uh, within the same group so for example we take the uh, financial sector policy instrument versus uh, liquidity instruments then we split the liquidity instruments into repo into the uh, into the collateral um, extension and into the um, uh, into the reserve requirement we'll see what, what were the effects of uh, each of the announcement on the on the um, on the spreads, and here you see the cumulative effect of domestic financial sector policy instruments, and here liquidity support, as I said, as a group of this repo and so on, and here you see the cumulative effect of international financial sector policy international. So actually, uh, the effect of IMF the announcement of uh, um, IMF uh, lines. And the results are quite interesting because they see that actually after the announcement, announcement day is zero, year zero, right? So after the announcement day, you see that the spreads increase. Okay, so they increase in this uh, uh, in, uh, for the financial sector policy and as well as for the liquidity instrument. So after the announcement, we see that actually the spreads uh, increase. The only uh, effect which is uh, positive in terms that we might claim that the spreads decrease, right? This were the effects of the announcement uh, coming from international financial institutions, which might be interpreted that actually they are more credible than our, um, our domestic institutions and therefore the market taken more seriously than, uh, the, uh, than in case of the domestic announcements. But nevertheless, here we do not see any statistical uh, test. It's only a cumulative effect and it's interesting to see whether these effects are statistically significant or not. And in fact, we, uh, we found that the effects are statistically significant in negative terms. So actually that the announcements of the central banks Okay, especially the liquidity support, okay? they reacted negatively, so the spreads reacted negatively to the announcement after uh, five days and three days, so actually the spreads increase or in terms of the swap decrease. And uh, when we look at the credit default swap spreads, they also increase, so actually which means more risk. Okay? And this is quite interesting because they are statistically significant when we look at this, they are, uh, even though Unfortunately, we don't have many uh, observations, but still they are statistically significant at 5 and 1% uh, significance level. Okay? So we see that actually the spreads increase after the announcement, especially after the domestic um, uh, institution announcements. Okay? Um, interesting is when we look at what kind of instruments uh, uh, led to, to the spread increase, and um, for, this is for the five-day window. And when uh, we look at the uh, three-day window, in a second I'm going to show you, we see that actually um, the, the, the highest significance effect was from repo. Yes, five minutes. But we don't observe any statistical effect coming from international policy. Okay, so actually even though in this cumulative effect we saw that the spread decreased, uh, but the effect is not statistically significant. Okay, so this is uh, for the three-day window, and this is what I said that especially the repo has uh, uh, led, uh, has um, contributed to the spread increase, and the effect is quite significant at uh, because it's a five signi uh, significance, uh, five percent significance left. Okay, the rest of the results stay exactly the same as with the three-day window, so which means one day and three days after the announcement. Okay. Okay, uh, and we also look at the uh, spillover effect, so which means it might be the case that uh, if a central bank in Poland um, uh, has introduced certain measures, uh, liquidity measures, this effect could also, uh, or other investors can take in this effect also for other countries, which means that we investors generally treat emerging Central and Eastern Europe as one region. So which means that it might be the case that there was a spillover effect coming from the announcement from one country to other countries, 
and this is exactly what we did. So actually what we look at how the announcement of, in one country has affected the spread in other countries. So we exclude the country of the announcement. Okay? And uh, here you see the results uh, 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 at statistically significant, at least at 10% significance level. So zero means there was no statistical significance. So plus minus means the results are statistically significant. Plus means uh, spread increase minus means spread, spread decrease. And actually, we see that uh, in that that the spreads in, uh, that the spreads reacted to the announcement from uh, uh, from uh, foreign countries in the region. Okay, and especially actually they are quite similar as uh, I showed you in the previous slide. So actually there was the spread uh, here, the spread increase and here the swap spread decrease, right? And here you see the credit default swap, so it's exactly the same, so increase. So we should exactly uh, interpret them in the similar manner in the previous, actually the announcement led to the, probably to the more risk, to the more uncertainty in these countries because the markets were liquid and suddenly the central bank intervenes. So what kind of uh, message goes into the market, right? So probably the central bank intervenes because there is a risk, right? And this is the reason why the central bank intervenes. And this caused actually more uncertainty that, uh, than it used to be actually before the announcement. This is my explanation actually for this result because I don't see the reason why the spread should, uh, should decrease. Uh, should decrease. But um, after the announcement, uh, uh, international liquidity, this is what I said, the IMF credit line, we see here that actually in this negative, but here there is no effect which can be interpreted in a positive way. So actually there is no spread increase, so which means that uh, um, the, the, the investor did not react to this information so in other words there was no increase in uncertainty in the market. I'm almost done. So what were the conclusions? So the results document that the policy interventions mostly dominated by central bank actions did not appear very successful in these countries. So actually they led to the spread increase. We find that the liquidity measures which were mostly uh, existent uh, during the crisis in these countries have negatively affected the interbank spreads, so which means that they increase the spreads. Uh, and our explanation is that the, through the, especially these liquidity instruments, the central banks did not solve the confidence crisis which existed in this market because most of the measures, as I said, these were liquidity measures, so which means, that the, but the markets were liquid. So actually, what the central bank should have done is it should have uh, injected more financial sector uh, instruments, right, uh, to restore the confidence in the market, then to uh, to put the liquidity measures for the markets which are liquid, okay, and this caused actually more uh, uncertainty uh, in the market than it used to be. And finally, the results, although we show that the international financial instruments, especially this IMF credit line, may bring some stabilization for the interbank markets because actually the spreads did not react, so we can it also interpret in a, posit uh, in a positive way. Okay, the result, what I should say, the results are robust. We have checked it for five um, day window, three day window, and we also excluded the Baltic states and excluded Latvia because Latvia, since 2011, has introduced uh, Euro. So actually it reacted to, we had to take the announcement of ECB and it also could have influenced our result. We excluded uh, Baltic State, we excluded Latvia, the results stay the same. Okay, there was a spread increase in uh, after the announcement of this conference. Thank you very much. But he's tired already. So, so, uh, so um, 
I think uh, Masha that she uh, provided me with the opportunity to discuss this paper because I have learned something in this paper. I, I haven't worked on interbank market so far, so uh, this is nice. And um, so first of all, I will I will just uh, mm, tell you how I see the paper. So it investigates short-term response of interbank uh, uh, credit and liquidity risk premiums to different types of policy uh, announcements. And uh, these include, as uh, Anita has uh, presented, also international interventions and financial sector initiatives. And uh, what is nice that it examines the effectiveness of all different, uh, different measures. And uh, it considers Central Eastern European countries. And uh, this is something that she has, uh, I'm pretty sure, spent a lot of time on, on uh, putting together this, uh, what we can call, unique database uh, with the policy initiatives that were announced in these countries. And the methodology that is used is the kind of standard uh, event study methodology. So for the results and contributions, mm, in the paper it is written that uh, one of the, the results or, or the, what they find is that uh, interbank markets and emerging markets are very affected by the global crisis. I will come back to this. Then there are these uh, effects like policy initiatives overall they are not effective in stabilizing the situations. And here we have results for the different, uh, different actions that uh, Anita has described. Uh, how I see the contribution of this paper, it's uh, uh, predominantly the contribution to the literature on emerging markets and especially interbank markets. And uh, what I like is that uh, this is uh, it's interesting topic. Uh, the the very important thing is uh, that it has some policy implications that um, might be important in the future as well. So for the comments, uh, as I have said, I haven't done papers on interbank markets before. So uh, when I was reading the paper, I learned something, but I still maybe in the presentation it was more clear than in the paper. Uh, I think you should uh, try to provide kind of clear background about these interbank markets in emerging markets. Because some things that you were mentioning, I was not sure like, uh, to explain clearly why and in, in which way these markets uh, differ from developed markets. You have it somewhere, you have some sentences uh, here and there, but it's not kind of clearly written, I would say. And for example, here in the presentation you were mentioning that there was no counterparty and liquidity risk. But in the paper, it seems like you are claiming this about all emerging, uh, all, all the interbank markets uh, of emerging economies. And I was wondering if this can be true. And if it's so, then provide some reference for this or explain why this is so. Because to me, at least, it was not clear. Also, uh, maybe there is some difference how these uh, um, interbank markets in emerging economies, how market participants trust policy makers. Maybe this is also some issue that is different. So I, I was really missing some kind of compact, uh, clear explanation about uh, in which way these markets are uh, uh, mm, different from uh, developed uh, economies. And then some details about the features of these markets that you are studying. You are not providing basically anything kind of big picture again about like what is like what what was uh, I, I don't know if these markets can be con considered if, if the trading is liquid there or I don't know some some very very basic characteristics of those markets by countries I would say. Then for the result, I mean you are you in the in the result sections and also uh, in the abstract, you are saying that uh, you find that interbank markets and emerging markets uh, were affected by the global crisis. Okay, I mean, we I think we know that, but uh, I don't see that this is the result of your empirical analysis, or you are not clearly indicating what what is exactly where you find this actually. So uh, this was this was not so clear. Uh, then about the, how I was thinking about these interventions because. I was thinking about the timing, so for me, uh, maybe how it was happening was that there was some intervention uh, in developed markets, and then uh, maybe these uh, regulators uh, in the emerging markets saw that and they were reacting to that. So, so maybe what, what we want to have in this event study is that this uh, kind of intervention is unexpected. So I, I was wondering if these interventions that you have there can really be considered unexpected if we take into account what was happening in the other markets. 
So how, how unexpected this was for the market participants? I don't know, maybe you, you just need, need to provide some story about this because I think this is how people would think about that. Uh, then, I was already saying that uh, you have, and, and you pointed this out at the end especially, that you have really, even if these countries are Central and Eastern European countries, and we know that people are putting them together, but they are very different actually. So, uh, I was wondering how the fact that in some of these countries, like we know Latvia, Lithuania, they have their own problems from inside, so how much this can influence your, your results? You are not accounting for this at all, or you are not even mentioning this. So for people who don't know anything about these markets, again, this is uh, kind of not, not good, I would say. And uh, yeah, you are not providing any comments by, by the countries. You, you are mentioning some papers on Poland, or providing some background on Poland, or examples from Poland, but not on the other countries. So I think this would add, because if your contribution is to this emerging markets literature, then you need to say more about these emerging markets, I would say. The, the, the issue is that there are not papers at all. Yeah, about but you have some perception, you know something yeah. about these markets, so, or provide some descriptive statistics, you know, and, and then for also for the uh, commenting of the results. And uh, about these spillovers, you, were, you have some estimations on that, but uh, what would be interesting is that um, to know if there are some countries in your group from which really this spillover goes to the other ones, like which are the particular countries that are the most important here. You are not saying anything about yeah, that. We cluster. So we uh. do the spillover and we cluster to increase the number of observations, right? Yeah. Okay, but uh, when you are talking about spillovers, I think this, this would be interesting to if it's possible to do somehow. Then. Uh, what you don't have in your paper, and I understand maybe this is not the this is not the main issue, but I think it's important for the period that you are considering because I at that time, uh, the for example, the policy announcements of some on some from some other countries are very important for everybody else, kind of. So you don't account for this at all. So I would be I would be curious to see what are then the impacts of this kind of uh, announcements, just to compare, you know because you, you see that these uh, domestic announcements don't work, so maybe maybe these other ones work differently, I don't know. But uh, we all know that they were very significant. So from Latvia, all of these countries are not in Euro and they are not under the supervision of uh, ECB. Yes, but so they, they have their own uh, supervisor. Yeah, this I understand, but we know how uncertain was the situation. We know, we know that uh, everybody was looking at, at what was happening in these big countries, so that's why. Um, this is just uh, alternate, like one other robustness ship that you can have alternative estimation window because you only have these 20 days there that you are considering for the average uh, to calculate the average daily spread. Yeah. But if I'm not mistaken, Stephen might um, confirm that if we have, like in event studies, usually you have much broader those windows, like, like 100 days, 200 days. So I don't know if you're, if if in this kind of studies of interbank markets is different, but in other other studies that also we have done, we, we considered really bigger uh, windows. So so maybe this is just an robust mission. This, uh, from so also yeah, I know, I know, I, I saw it in that paper. I checked yeah. that, but uh, yeah. But if we if you think about event studies in general, then usually the window is is uh, much uh, bigger. So. Uh, and then I was thinking, wonder, why don't you take the analysis one step further to, uh, for the uh, for the regression analysis? Because this is normally how you would continue in this analysis. And then for the policy implications, for example, you are mentioning that okay, the, there should be some new instruments used, but you are not saying anything more about it. So maybe you should try to say more about this. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm finishing because I only have minor comments, but these are. Uh, this, uh, this I can I can tell you later. These are really minor comments. So overall, I think it's a it's a nice paper that contributes uh, to to a niche, I would say. But you you need to do more maybe in writing or or telling reader more that you about this that you really know. But it's not in the paper, I would say. So thank you. I was very surprised that uh, in Estonia there were no interest rate uh, rate uh, cuts, uh, and there were interest rate cuts in Lithuania and Latvia. 
In fact, the, the three Baltic states usually coordinate their monetary policies. And uh, I want to say that, in fact, uh, usually the same banks operate in all three countries, like Swed Bank, Sebs, Parks, uh, and so on. And if one of these uh, countries keeps interest rates at a high level and uh, the other to uh, reduce interest rates, then it becomes uh, possible to make a sort of arbitrage. So as a result, usually these uh, three countries, they coordinate the actions. Sometimes the timing is different, but, uh, but uh, they, they coordinate and they move together. Yes. And in your sample, you don't have uh, uh, cuts in interest rates in Estonia, but uh, you have them in Lithuania and Latvia. Well, uh, all of the announcements have been confirmed with the central banks. So we have uh, collected them manually, but uh, we have also written the emails the central banks asking the central banks to check whether we are right or not with, uh, with the announcement. And uh, specifically, I don't remember whether it was for Estonia or it was for Latvia. Uh, uh, well, this was confirmed by the central banks, right? So uh, actually, there is no any mistake in the data collection because we, we wanted to mm -hmm. make sure the data are as precise as possible because it's very crucial for the results. Uh, so it's even. So we don't know why it was it like that, but it was like that. And it was confirmed by the central bank, right? I see. But uh, yes, but nevertheless, we can also look at the spillover effect. So Estonia was also there. So for example, uh, what happened uh, if, for example, in Latvia there was an increase in interest rate, right? then we excluded Latvia and look at how this announcement affected other countries, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, in this results, actually, we found that the, the spillovers are, um, are available. So, which is consistent with the studies um, on other, uh, other studies from the Central East Europe, right? That everyone takes this region as one, and therefore actually the decision, as you said, the decision of one bank affects also the spreads and all kinds of the premiums in other countries. But uh, yes, indeed, we did not uh, do like how uh, the effect of the decision in Estonia uh, was in uh, Latvia and Lithuania individually because we would be constrained with a limited number of observations and we would not trust it. So we cannot do this. this I have another question but a suggestion for the title. So it's about, if I understand correctly, it's about the governments, they uh, do something and that signals to the rest of us something is wrong. They know that something is wrong, so that's fine now. That's basically the idea, right? So my, my idea would be, there's no smoke without the fire, the give worst effects ah, of thanks. saving. This is safe. very nice. <laughs> Like the first fact of saving is safe. We're safe, but that need to be safe. Why do we safe? That's good. That's so cool. <laughs> but I mean, not that at least do anything, but not to like this. But, but, the point. but the funny thing is that in all of these countries, the central banks did the, the thing that they did a great job. This is the funny thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah when, you, when you ask the central bankers, I was uh, last week at the conference of the uh, uh, head of the Central Bank of Poland, and he said we did a great job. So it was really everything what we did helped us in the crisis. It's like if there would be five on running down the corridor, and it's all panic, kill each other, and then say, it's going to be mad because <laughs> maybe we are needed. So, so it's always easy to create hindsight if you create some purpose. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Of course, uh, but okay, I like it. I like it. It's very counterintuitive. So, so that's the question Stephen got, right? On one day. I said, not in the paper, you did not expect. <laughs> but this is something we really didn't expect. Yeah. So that's a nice thing. For this session is over. Thanks so much. Thank you guys, yes. Uh, that's it for the formal part of today's workshop.